Hey guys, we are the K3, and this is another one of our Astro Corners, and this one is Scorpio. So get ready to get juicy and dark. Yes. <laughs> All right, you guys, you know, if you've watched any of our Astro Corners, when it comes to Scorpio energy, me and Marisa get really excited. And oh, yeah. now we're talking all Scorpios. Scorpios across the board. So Ooh, this gonna is going to be a sexy, quite, is a sexy, sexy 30 minutes. <laughs> sexy 30 minutes, you guys. So get ready. Now, we also did a poll on our YouTube channel to find out which top three guys you wanted to go with. And this is, and so this, this, you guys voted for these. So don't yell at me later. <laughs> <laughs> well, you asked anyway, for them you asked for them <laughs> so we are going to do what we can with this and then we will as always leave some comments below and we'll go, we'll get started so, and our first scorpio up to bat is probably one of the biggest scorpios out there guys soji sub born november 4th 1977 i mean seriously he got he's how marisa and i met so i'll be eternally grateful for him because that is how we met which is fantastic it's how the whole k3 <laughs> came together with soji sub thank you this thank you <laughs> Thank you, Thank so you Kaisa. <laughs> you and your Scorpio energy worked its magic. So just mm -hmm. real quick, before we jump into Soji Sub, Scorpios, this is what you need to know. It is a water sign. And so it's very emotional. It is a fixed sign, which means those emotions, they, they're fixed. They're not going anywhere. So once they feel them, you're not getting away from them. Oh, and it's all, right? Mm. Maurice is like, I recognize this energy a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Scorpio energy is a fixed water. So very emotional, very fixed, right? So it's, it's, it's stable and it's almost unbudging. So that's why Scorpios get such a reputation for being so, uh, just dangerous, really, because once those emotions kick in, there's really not a lot that can change where, where the direction it's going. It's also related to like sex and death and all those deep inner workings of what it goes on with people. It's considered one of the most intense signs of the zodiac one of the most dynamic one of the most magical also considered one of the most mysterious and secretive so that's why they get a lot of that that darker uh, uh, uh personality trait assigned to them like they are mysterious and you don't always know what's going on with them but that is what makes scorpio so dynamic because you can tell like those still waters are running really 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 deep it's a beefy one and those people who choose to come into this world as a scorpio they're asking for some heavy, heavy power in their in their back pocket. And how they wield it is a whole different story, but that's what they came to try and do. And Soji Sub, please. I think this makes total sense because by the end of this video, when you when Jenna's explained all of these <laughs> Scorpios to you, these are like some of the biggest superstars. Like it makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah. I mean, it's just such, it's such you can't take your eyes off Scorpios. People have Scorpio energy and a, a lot of it, even with a little of it, there's something about them that you just cannot not pay attention to. And Soji Sub is a, a double Scorpio. So he's got, he's a Sun Scorpio and a Mercury Scorpio. So his essence and how he communicates is going to be from that dark needing to get deep. It's never going to be casual with him at all. So his Sun sign is going to be that dynamic needing to like, Nothing he does is going to be casual. The way he's going to communicate with you, the way he's going to come at you and want to have these conversations, they're not just going to be, hey, how's it going today? Oh, I did this. He's going to be like, so was it enjoyable? Did you really like it? Like, is that what's really going on with you? Like, he's going to want to know you and know everything about you. But because he's got that Scorpio Mercury, he is going to not want to give up as much about himself. Oh, so, so that's why he has his own agency? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, because he's Explained. got that. Yeah. <laughs> he needs, he needs to know all those inner workings. And, um, his moon though is over in Leo. So that's where you give his moon and Mars are over in Leo, which gives him that, that kind of flair and that pop as we've talked about with Leo before. Leo's for Leo's. It's not real unless it's been acknowledged. So him as a as a public figure, he knows he gets the attention, but it's not real until it's acknowledged because of all that Leo. So that's why being a model and an actor really works for him. He's not going to be that Leo energy that is that is you know needs to be front and center, but he likes it and he's very comfortable there. Like he doesn't need he needs the attention, but he doesn't need the fame, if that makes sense. So his moon Mars is all about that. So the way he's taking a action and the way he's emotionally satisfied is when you pay attention to him. And then he's got that Scorpio underbelly of, of needing to be deep and meaningful. And that's where I think that's why he's such one that we just can't not watch when he's in a role. 
even if yeah. the role is like, what is happening? I don't even know what's going on right now. You still Curious. are like, hey, Soji Sub. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. So basically what I'm trying to say is that he is a Sun, Mercury, and Scorpio that squares his Moon, Mars, in Leo. So his need on the public stage to be secretive and mysterious and just dive deep into the, the relationships that he has squares or is is counter to his emotional need to be seen and recognized. So those two energies play out, I think, a lot in what we see of him privately and when we see him in roles. Like, we just want to know more about him, and he only gives us little pieces. And then you look over here, and his Venus is in Libra. Now, what's fascinating to me about Soji Sub is, uh, as I've talked about my chart a million times, him and I have the exact same Moon, Mars, and, Lib and Mercury. We are both Moon, Mars, Leos, and a Libra in, in, I'm sorry, Venus and Libra. And so I understand that combination. So there's this combination of needing everything to be pretty and you needing to love us. Like that is, <laughs> that is a combination, but his is, his is coded with the Scorpio energy. And so <clears throat> that Scorpionic energy is puts like a darker sheen on it. Mine is more Virgo. So mine is more like, oh my God, if you don't, I'm a horrible, I'm a failure. I have done something wrong. His is, if, if you don't see those things about him or, or recognize that type of in energy from him, then he just wants to go deep and dark and figure out why. Ooh. Like, why do you not have these feelings? Why is this not going on? And so, Ooh. again, I feel like that plays really well in a lot of the roles we've seen him in and why we enjoy them so much. Do you remember that movie, Marisa, what, what, when he was a boxer? Oh, Always? Always. Like, oh, remember, like, it was just one so of the best movies ever. Really? Right? So good. Right? But that, <laughs> that, that incorporates like all of that, like oh, okay. the needing to be recognized, but the need to not only be recognized, but to take care of everything, like to be emotionally stable, but he's fixated on what needs to be done. And like, you know, and then just like, he's the, he's the embodiment of the, of the trope of disappearing for a year and not talking to your ex because it's, it's the, uh, the noble idiocy because yeah. it's just better for you. And I know, I know. And so. <laughs> So he is, that's just, that is why I just, I just think he's just such a dynamic actor. And then if you look at his North Node, which is what I always like to talk about, his North Node is also in Libra. So you got that Libra energy for him. Relationships were always going to be a big thing for him. And he just got married. So he, and his North Node is conjunct his Pluto. So the relationship aspect that he needed to work towards was conjunct his Pluto with the Venus kind of hanging out over here somewhere, but it's all kind of in the same, you know, within the same 10 degrees, which makes it a very powerful thing. So you've got a Mercury, as we've talked about before, we've got a Pluto-Venus conjunction to his North Node. So you've got relationships where the fact that he waited as long as he did to get married did not surprise me because mm -hmm. for him, he needed to tear away everything that didn't work for him and then rebuild it to the perfect thing for it to work because it's Libra, so it needed balance. So we need to figure out someone that balanced off of what worked for him. And so that Pluto, that Pluto conjunct North node just gives that North that need to, that need to achieve that North node a little bit of a power boost because stepping into your North node is a little bit more challenging. So that's Soji sub in a uh, very, very small nutshell. Like we could, <laughs> you could deep dive a lot of this stuff, but that's pretty much, that's, that's, those are his big key things. Like he just, he, he's not superficial at all. He does need to be recognized and balance and relationships are super key to who, to whatever he's doing. And if you look at like his, his best friend, he's been best friends with Sung, Sung Hung forever. Like he's very, there's a, there's a lot of loyalty and fixed, fixed loyalty with that. And that is a very, that's, that's very much in this chart for sure. Next up, another juggernaut of, and this is, She's just so huge. Like you see her name, which is Jung Ji Hyun, and you know it's going to be like huge. You just know it. Another Scorpio, guys. Like for sure. Like she's so dynamic. How could yeah. she's one of those women that you just cannot not watch? Oh my gosh! It, not just because she's gorgeous and super right. talented, but yeah, she's got that magnetic um, pull. Yeah. That you're just yeah. you know locked on her tractor beam. <laughs> exactly. Like she's got that, and I. She's in October 30th. So she's in October Scorpio, October 30th, 1981. Um, but her chart is literally Scorpio, 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 Libra, Libra, Libra. Like it's like two huge chunks. And then she's got these couple of planets that are in these other spaces. So it's amazing. So she is a, um, 
is a Scorpio sun. And as we just talked, fixed, fixed water energy, fixed emotional energy. She is, when she locks onto something done, and I think we see that in like, she's got that gaze. She's got that penetrating scorpionic gaze in everything you see her in. Like even in the, like what she was on 15 seconds at the end of kingdom season two. And we're all like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 15 seconds, people like how many people can make 15 seconds that amazing. Right. And then she's got, what's really fascinating to me. She's got a moon and Uranus, which is the disruptor planet conjunct in Scorpio. So this is a woman who's not going to play by all the rules. And I think that we have noticed that not only in her roles, but a lot of the things that she does, even with her life, like she pops in and out, has a baby, comes back, nothing, like nothing, like didn't skip a beat. Like, right. She is, she is the master of her own domain and nobody, she strikes me as the kind of woman that she's just going to take care of it. And that's just how it is. And those are the rules that she plays by. It's pretty amazing because she's been in two of the, like two of the biggest K dramas. And she, like she, she never, she hardly ever does a K drama also because she's got little kids right. now, but, um, legend of the blue sea and my love from another star. Right. But it's, yeah. So she'll do films. She'll do dramas. She's, she's like this, the commercial, what do they call it? CF queen. Yeah. But yeah, she's such a superstar level that she, yeah, she can write her own. Oh yeah. Hey, right. And that's book. all that uh, her emotions and, and, and that kind of disruption, like her emotions are going to like totally lead her in the ways that are not going to be the regular path. And they're all going to be scorpionic in nature. So it's going to be for her life and death. Cause that's also a very scorpionic thing. Like everything is life and death. Choosing toothpaste is life and death for a lot of Scorpios. Like you're just like, Oh my gosh, really? Like stop. But they're like, <laughs> this is a very important decision, you know? And so you know, it's just that, but that's for her a very an emotional thing. So she, so if you look at this, she's also a sun moon Scorpio. So not only who she is, but who, what her emotional core is. So we always talk about this. Your top three things about your personality are your sun, your moon, and your rising. Now we don't have a birth time, so we don't know what her rising sign is, but she's a double Scorpio, you guys, a double Scorpio. She is dynamic times a billion. Like she could be a super villain or she could be, you know, anything she wants really. Cause she has that much power in her arsenal. And then you look at some of her other planets and you got her Mercury, her Mercury is over here in Libra. So again, she's got needs that need for balance and that's how she communicates. So I think we see that a lot in some of her where even though she's got that, like when she turns on the scorpionic thing, especially in like legends of the blue sea, like when she turned it on, you were like, Oh, so dynamic. It's amazing. But when she tried to play a little more of those goofier things, like that's when that Libra kind of kicked in the way she communicated, you know, playing a little bit of the lighter aspects of it. And then she's got her Venus over in, um, in Sagittarius, which also gives her that kind of her going her own path. So again, in relationships and that type of thing. And again, if you look at her dramas, they're not obvious choices. She's basically played, she's played, she's been with an alien and she's been a mermaid and now she's going to be a zombie hunter. So, I mean, <laughs> she's yeah. not, she's not, she really doesn't seem to be for her. What brings her that, that emotional core is not the traditional, you know, melodrama or melodrama. Like that just no. is not melodrama. It's not going to cut it for her. It needs to have a little bit more emotional heft to it. And yeah, so she needs a challenge. Yeah. And that's very scorpionic. And so, and then her North node is in cancer. And so she's got, she's got that need to nurture, but where she's very comfortable is in that Capricorn, Capricornian energy, which is about running shit and getting it done. So again, I think we see that all the time. Like, I feel like that's, that seeps out in a lot of her roles where you're just like, even if she's playing kind of goofy, you can also tell there's this under, there's an undercurrent that is like, just get it. <laughs> right so yeah she's a real it's a really fascinating chart because it's so lumped together she's got a bunch of like outer planets uh in libra she's got one two three she has four planets in libra and she's got three planets in scorpio so she's just those are two very competing yet complementary signs so it's like libra leads into scorpio so you have to kind of you have to kind of master the libran energy of other and balance before you can handle the power of, of Scorpio and being able to deep dive all that information with other people. And so I find it really fascinating that those are her two main, her two main things. And then her, um, as we always talk about the black moon Lilith, her innate, um, sensuality is actually over here in Sagittarius, which leads, which also plays well with her Venus. 
So again, that forging your own path, that, you know, finding your own thing with a little bit of fire. So it's got a little bit of that pep to it as well. Junjian is just, she's a powerhouse. She's a freaking yeah. powerhouse. And there's oh, yeah. a reason for it. And it's in her <laughs> chart. It's in the stars, ladies and gentlemen. It's <laughs> in the stars. Next up, Yi Dong-uk. Fascinates <laughs> me because yes, I definitely see the scorpionic energy. Absolutely. Like when he, he can do a, he can do a villain like nobody else. Like he's creepy as He's just super creepy and can channel all that dark Scorpio energy. Oh, he was strangers a from Grim hell. Reaper, right? Right? Of course, he's death. That's what Sagittarius. That's what that's what oh. Scorpio is. Scorpio is the death embodiment. So the fact that he played that role, not surprising Think at all. Goblin, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, it was really interesting. But what's fascinating to me is he's only a Sun Scorpio. That's it. He's got an Aquarius Moon, which. Gives him that quirk that I think for me makes him so attractive. Like I oh, like okay. a little bit of quirk with my really intense, a lot of intensity. I think it lightens him up enough where you're not like, whoa, whoa, son. Like what is <laughs> happening right now? So yeah, again, we do not have a birth time. So he might actually have a lot of planets in the eighth house. But I feel like he's got more scorpionic energy than just the sun. So if he had a lot of planets in the eighth house, that would give him a little bit more heft there. But his basically, he's a Scorpio sun. He is an Aquarius moon. He is a Libra uh, Mercury, and he's a Capricorn Venus, and he's a Virgo uh, Mars. So he's got a lot of Earth energy to play with that Scorpio, which does play very, very nicely. And then he's got these two air signs, which which is gives him that more cerebral, I think, personality in a lot of the stuff we watch him in. I definitely feel like he's a thinking man's actor, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Plus and so, the quirkiness is like, oh, yeah. that's so uh, appealing. Right. <laughs> so you got you got that Libra. His communication style is Libra. So it's going to be that much more need to balance and make sure everybody's okay, which I feel like we, it is something that I feel does, we do recognize that a lot. Like what was that last one he just did with um, you and him? Touch your heart. Touch your heart. Like. Long gone. <laughs> the rom com, like I think, when he plays in the rom com world, that's when he get that's when he can try and channel more of that Libran energy and a lot of that Earth energy because that's when he gets the most grounded and can relate to the ladies and be that romantic kind of you know he's going to take care of you all that Earth energy right and then that sure. Aquarian thing, right I know yeah <laughs> and yes. then you got that Aquarian that gives him just a, he's not your standard you know three piece suit so I I. I do find him to be a really fascinating character. And I really, it's really interesting for me to just look at his chart. Cause then you look at like, he's got this really interesting conjunction again with outer planets, but it's his Pluto, his Mercury and his Jupiter are all conjunct at 25 Libra. Like they're just wham, bam, right on top of each other. So his need to communicate. And I think that's so fascinating because he just did that talk show. Talk show. And it, it's not going to be, it's going to be big. Like he needs to do it. Like there's no getting away from it. Like I, what was okay. the, title, the title? I think was I want to talk or something. he does. Yeah. Because, because Pluto attached to that, you can't not want to like just make, you want to transform the world with your words. And then you can put the Jupiter on top of that. And he wants the biggest audience possible. So the fact that he was, that he did that talk show it makes perfect sense. And the fact that it was in Libra and then he just wanted to get everybody's side to what was going on and wanted to really did that Scorpio energy wanted to dig in, but then he wanted to hear everybody's opinion about what was going on and do long interviews, not just a little quick, like two or three minutes. Like he wanted oh, to spend right. like the whole half hour with you or however long it was. So that is very much what is in his chart for sure. And then he also has the North node in cancer. So again, we have that, that, that need to nurture, which again, I think you saw in his talk show. He is, uh, in case we haven't mentioned it, he is a November 6th, 1981. So another 1981 uh, Scorpio, which just like Jun Ji-hoon. And so again, that Cancer North Node, Capricorn South Node. So again, very comfortable getting shit done and owning his own stuff. And then you couple that with the fact that his Venus is also in Capricorn. And so the way he relates to people and his South Node make him very comfortable being like the CEO of his life. Like that's not going to be hard. What he needs to work towards is kind of making, using those skills to nurture people and, you know, be like that. So, so yeah, so that is E. Dong Wook. And possibly the only other, I think, K-drama star that could rival Jung Ji Hoon's, uh, Hun's celebrity and intensity is Song Hai Kyo. And she's also a Scorpio. So, 
guys, I think there's something to this. I'm just saying, like, is there any other <laughs> that we can even think of that is has so many huge issues? Huge. Has she's had she's had the relationships and the scandals and the 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 shows and just like all of it, like yeah. And so it's just she's just she's just she's the epitome of celebrity, right? Yeah. In the K drama universe. And yeah. she also is a Scorpio. She is November 22nd, 1981. So she's right at the edge, at the other end of the edge. So she's another 81, but she's almost almost a Sagittarius, but not quite. So she's at that last degree of Scorpio. Uh, so that's her essence. But, she's, uh, but she does have a lot of that uh, Sagittarian energy with some of her, outs- of her outer planets and her Black Moon Lilith. So her innate femininity is going to be a little bit off the beaten path, which I think we have seen with some of, some of her choices. <laughs> yeah. I mean, God bless. <laughs> that poor woman has had more relationship scandals than I think anyone in, in the K-drama universe, or at least the ones that have been public. So, but I think that that's because she just doesn't, she just, she, she, she loves hard, but she loves in her own way, man. Like she's not going to, she's not, she's going to do it her own way. And that's just how she is. And then she's a Scorpio. So she's not gonna take shit about it. So that doesn't surprise me at all. Her moon is in Libra. She's a Mercury Scorpio, another, uh, she's got Mercury and Scorpio. And then her Venus is in Capricorn and her Mars is in Virgo. So again, she's got that Earth energy with the way she relates to people and the way she takes action, which softens up and plays really well with that set, that Scorpio energy. But then she's got that Scorpio tongue, man. She's got that Scorpio mercury. So she is not going to suffer fools well and she's going to tell you about it. And so I really do feel like with some of the, some of the relationships, like she just is like, I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough of your shenanigans. And, you know, she might have, she might have used her little Scorpion sting her a little too aggressively and that was the end of that so yeah so if you look at her chart like she's got she's got uh she's got that moon over in libra so again she wants that balance she does emotionally the balance is what makes her feel emotionally safe but she got the scorpionic energy that needs to kind of get into the muck and so she's playing it's a little bit again something she's had to get used to and then she's got that uh she's got the the uh, earth energies over with her relationship planet so she does, she's got a nice combination going on there. And it's just, it's about where her rising is and where those all place it in her chart, because that kind of will tell you where that's going to play out the most. And so, yeah, and then her again, she's in 1981. So she's got that North Node in Cancer. So again, working towards that more nurturing, that more, uh, caring is not the right word because you're very, every sign is caring, but that more nurturing aspect of the Cancer. But she's very comfortable taking care of her own shit, which again, I think we've seen. We've look look at all look at what she's accomplished. Look at what she's been able to do. I mean, clearly this woman knows how to run not only her life but her business and the things she's overcome and the things that she's worked through and persevered through. Clearly, she has a good head on her shoulders to get through that shit. And you put that that scorpionic energy in there, and she is she is she's not suffering fools, and she's not going to be a wilting flower ever. So that is why she's such a such a juggernaut for sure. I mean, that's, I mean, Descendants of the Sun, can you even imagine that with another actress? You really needed someone because the show was wacky in so many ways, but she's right. not. No. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why it was so appealing because you could, you might not necessarily relate to her, but you mm-hmm. understood her. All right, you guys. And this was the chart that you all wanted to see the most. And I have to admit, this is the first time I'm looking at a chart. So this is exciting. But Park Hyung uh, Hyung Sik from uh, Strong Woman Bo Dong Soo, and what was what was the name of Suits? That's Suits. Those, those are the two that I remember the most. Um, yeah, I mean, our boy's got. I, what's really interesting, he's got the Scorpio energy for sure, but he's got puppy energy. So where is that puppy energy? Let's go to the chart. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What does he got? He's got a Scorp. Oh, there it is. He's got a Scorpio Sun. He's got a Pisces Moon. So he's got that little soft underbelly, which I, and he got, so he got a lot of water. So he's very emotional. Right. And I think that's what gives some of that puppy energy because puppies are sweet and they just want love. And they, I, so I think that's where that comes from. And then he's got a Sagittarius Mercury, a Libra, uh, Venus and another, a Scorpio Mars. Okay. This boy has a Pluto Mars conjunct in Scorpio. Let me just say, you do not want to piss this man off. Oh my God. Really? I'm, oh I, my hope, gosh. I hope 
that it is in a house that's a little good that puts a little bit of a damper on that because that is an intense combination. That mm. is your action planet, and Mars is ruled by Venus is by, ruled by Aries, so like the war planet and Scorpio. So it's comfortable in the Scorpio energy. So he's very comfortable with that with that Scorpionic energy in Mars. But then you put it conjunct to the degree with with Pluto. Again, we've talked about Pluto a bunch of times. Where Pluto is a is a is is a planet that is all about destruction and rebirth. So when he like he's one that is just when he gets when he gets a cause and wants to take action, just watch out. Like it is going to be just scorched earth until it is accomplished. So I'm really it's fascinating to me because I don't think we've seen that in any of his roles, and I feel like. Like that is a dynamic that I kind of want to see when he gets out of the army, like for That's sure. That's the thing. Right? Yeah. He's in the military right now. Yeah. And I'm just looking up where he's serving. Cause I think I read somewhere that like, he's not doing desk duty. <laughs> right. Which doesn't surprise me because he's got, there's an intensity there that I think you would be drawn to learning more about, you know, I don't want to say destructive forces, but that type of just that level of power like to just understand that like i can see him being drawn to that yeah so he's serving in the military police department of the capital defense command oh oh yes yes (laughs) pluto all about power and in scorpio like it's all about that so you put them together like i like seriously when he gets back like i need him to be in a super spy thing for sure (laughs) <laughs> he would be so good at that because he would I mean, because it's in Scorpio it's going to be mysterious so he would play like the greatest super spy ever because the thing is he's got such fine features he's so handsome but in a very fine way mm-hmm. but that that really kind of plays against what you're saying right, right here this intensity because I this think, power I yeah. think Ooh. what's happening is because he's got that he's got that Scorpio sun he's got that Scorpio energy obviously because he's got a sun and and his his sun based on his birth time but it's not going to change a ton but he's it's almost conjunct as Mars as well so you almost have a triple conjunction sun Mars Pluto conjunction so he's got that he's got that Scorpio energy that we've talked about where you can't not not pay attention to him but then you look at his features which depending on what his rising sign is, which is really a lot about how you look, that's, that's what's kind of, that kind of gives you more of your, your countenance of what the people, what people see about you. Right. So if, it, if, if that falls in a softer sign, say, you know, like a Libra or, you know, a Pisces, he's going to get a little bit of a softer look, but it completely belies how intense the boy is like, and I'm, I'm, into them seeing what he can do with that when he gets back because he does have that Pisces that Pisces heart that that emotional core with the moon which which gives him that soft underbelly for all that power so I just there's such an amazing dichotomy that he can play with there and it's all water so it's all emotion I'm loving that so much (laughs) and I can't wait for him to get out of the military now thanks for picking him you guys I have never looked at his chart before (laughs) and then he's got a Venus over in Libra and so he does, he's going to, he's going to be drawn to the finer things. So that's all, you know, so you, you know, so that's just, he's going to want to relate to you on a more romantic level. So I think that's, again, why he's so, so swoon worthy for so many people, because he's got that combination of the dynamic power of Scorpio with that smooth, with that need to be romantic and, and the, the unconditional love of that Venus moon combo mm. and then you look and then he's yeah and so just you've got that combination and he his people need to be pitching him on some much more juicier things because this boy is dynamic for sure and he can play in those realms so much like seriously like when you look at Sterling and Bodong Su that is that's that he's drawn to how powerful she is and that is and i think that's why we believe it so much because he does he he loves power he doesn't need to he doesn't need to wield it because he innately knows he has it and i think that's what was so appealing to him in that show i think part of it is that he was in his 20s and when he comes out of the military he'll be you know 30 or 30 yeah he'll be 30 yeah and i think 
that makes it's going to be really fascinating to watch him as he matures because he just did his first film juror eight which was not a rom-com and it was not yeah it's like so he's he's a really you know he's a he's potentially a really deep actor so i can't wait for the maturity for that yeah, the mm-hmm. maturity once that kicks in, and that usually also plays with like your Saturn return. So he should be coming up on that. He's actually headed into that in the next year. So that's going to be really interesting. And his Saturn is in Aquarius. So that's interesting because for him, what he's going to have to learn during the Saturn return, and where I think we're going to see maybe some shifts in his career, if he, you know, if, if it all goes well is he's going to want to rebel. He's going to want to not do those rom-coms. He's not going to want to do just what's expected of him. He's going to want to go outside of, you know, the societal norms of that. And so that's really exciting to me. So, yeah. So I'm super, super excited to see what he's going to do when he gets out of the military because this boy's got a dynamic, powerful chart that I don't think we've seen the depths of which he can achieve, especially in whatever it is he wants to do. Yeah. I will say this as well, though. He might also. Hmm, I'm just going to add this. And you who know him better than I do, because he, I, I've, only, I, I've only kind of paid a little bit of attention to him. But this is very interesting to me. His north node is conjunct his Uranus in Capricorn. So having Uranus in Capricorn already makes him kind of a nonconformist for um, basically societal norms. Then you conjunct it to his north node to the degree. I mean, it's a smack dab solid conjunction, and that's what he's working towards in this lifetime. He is not going to follow the normal path, so I'm really fascinated to see what happens. And then he's got this Saturn thing happening in Aquarius, which is the ruler of Uranus. So you got that disruptor energy happening in two spots coming up very soon for him. So I am crazy intrigued to see what he is going to do in the next couple of years. <gasps> nice. Oh, it's going to be <laughs> fun. Oh, it's you. I love it. All right, you guys. So there's just a brief overview as all of these are, because we don't have a birth time and you know, there's only so much we can talk about because we don't, you know, there's only so much without a birth time that you can do, but it's so much fun to be able to talk about this because I think it gives us a different idea about what all these guys bring to the table. Because as you've noticed in all of our astrology videos, everybody's got this little different combination and we can see pops of it. And I love it when they play into it. So until next time, we are the K3. I'm Jen. I'm Marisa. And you, thank you for watching. Tell us your thoughts below. We love hearing from you. And also like, subscribe and hit the bell. Uh, And if you want to see any of our other astrology videos, you can find them all right here. Here is the playlist. And we will see you next time. Bye.